So hey, I'm adding this into the beginning of part two. I had originally this about town uh, video, I had originally intended it to be one video. Wound out being quite a bit more. I really enjoyed this process, but we wound up being, it was almost 50 minutes. So I was like, I'm gonna split this into two, which is why I'm doing this little bit that's gonna be added on to the beginning of the part two, which is only gonna deal with the town square and then <coughs> talking about the video in general, the video series. So that'll be the completion of this first bit of the Going About Town series, Anvil, Pennsylvania. So I want to thank you for coming along, and I hope you enjoy part two that talks about the square. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you about town. So the first corner of this town square that we're going to talk about is the northwest which is where fulton bank stands today uh, on this corner actually uh where the fulton bank property is there was originally four properties you had one west main which was built in 1829 and that's the property on the far right of this picture here it was built uh as the home for john Scherzner, who was a very successful merchant and uh, there, once again, you can see it there on the right. None of these places were really that big, because if you look at the size of the length of the property there, <coughs> it's really not that big. And on the far left would have been the Rank House, which is originally, there was another house that was sort of like a clapboard building, which was built for, I believe, may have been a doctor as well. And then this brick house was built, which was for Dr. Rank. Uh, but anyways, uh, Scherzer's house, Eventually, in 1898, he wound up renting out the front of the first floor to the Postal Service in 1898. Eventually, the Postal Service wound up moving uh, behind the northeast uh, corner on the back side of that lot. And that was in 1988 or 1928. And this housed a barber shop and also, as you can see, there's sort of a shop and Coca-Cola, so probably like a little bit of a soda fountain was in there as well. Uh, this uh, was torn down eventually in 1956 along with the original stone building at 3 West of Anvil National Bank. That was a beautiful stone building which was built in 1894. It started out as Anvil National Bank, then I believe it was 1958. Eight, they wound up merging with Lebanon Valley National Bank, and eventually, I believe, 1999, they merged, and that's the Anvil National Bank. You get to see the stone facade. They wound up merging with Lebanon Valley Farmers Bank, which eventually, in 2010, merged with Fulton Bank, which is a Fulton Bank today. Uh, and the building there you saw in the, one of the last pictures, it was straight to the corner, and then they wound up doing some reconstruction on the uh, square there and they actually cut out like a little like a square section of that building and that's where I was filming earlier where it has those four stone markers that uh, talk about the four uh, square corners. Uh, anyways on 7 West was Davis Pharmacy and this was a pharmacy from pretty much the beginning. This building was also was torn down in 1978 to make room for parking lot or for the drive through for the bank. Uh, and Anvil National Bank was also, I believe, torn down in 1956. So by, you know, a year later, they had a new bank. Uh, one house down further was that White House that we just showed. This was also built in 1798 for John Schertzner. It was bought eventually by Judge Kingports, and he operated a store here. This store, or this home, because of its age, 1798, being torn down, and basically the stones, just nothing was preserved. This was a major reason for Friends of Old Anvil being created. It was raised in 1978, as well as the house next door or the building business next door which was the pharmacy davis pharmacy in 1978 for the parking lot and uh for the drive through going down a little bit further you had uh you have jns pizzas there now but at one time there was a really pretty building that was hotel anvil unfortunately this uh, hotel suffered two fires the last being in 1985 which eventually destroyed it 
And then last but not least, you had down where Anvil Natural Foods is now. That used to be, you see the picture there, the Ben Franklin Five and Dime. I always loved the Five and Dimes. We used to go to one in, in uh, Pine Grove. So that is the northwest corner of the square. On the southwest corner was a very famous building, eventually known as the Eagle Hotel. Went by a couple different names. This is the building right here. Uh, originally, the first building was the Hennings Hotel, which was built in 1790, a much smaller structure. Uh, eventually, in 1845, it was replaced with a large stone uh, restaurant and hotel called or known as the Eagle Hotel. Uh, the rear of the building was used by many different building or different uh, businesses over the years, but most uh, notably was the Modell Vienna Bakery. Uh, in 1910, an Isaac Bowman took ownership of this building and he changed the name to Penway Hotel and Bakery. And just like what had been before with the Modell Vienna Bakery, the back three floors of that building housed the Penway Bakery. Uh, on those three floors, the second and third floor apparently is where they made the dough, and then they had a chute that went down to the first floor, which is where the actual bakery and the ovens were. Uh, as you see here, in the hotel back in its heyday, they had a really beautiful, like, wooden, a lot of these different inns had these really beautiful saloons and uh, bars and taverns in them, and this one was no, no different. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful building. Uh, Penway uh, sold products under the name of Aunt Betty's. Uh, unfortunately, in 1970, there was a fire. Just like Hotel Anvil, huge fire. Uh, the owner at that time was in the process of selling the property to the Atlantic and Richfield Oil Company, which would eventually become Sunoco. Uh, or would get sold to Sunoco. Uh, this fire was so extreme, it took eight fire companies and more than 80 fire firemen to bring the fire under control. And there you see a picture of it. Uh, it was so extreme as well. Uh, in the next picture, you'll actually see, it actually the uh, new Lebanon Valley Farmers Bank, uh, I believe at that time it would have been Lebanon Valley Bank, but that new building, it actually melted the glass, which you'll see here in a second with this picture. It melted the glass. It was that, the fire was that extreme. Uh, there were a number of other shops that went down on this southern side of Main Street. These shops, unfortunately, as well, were lost in the fire. I believe a total of is here seven or eight buildings were lost this fire was so extreme and uh here in this picture you actually see some of them they included a barber shop that was right next to the uh hotel which at that time was called the penway hotel a shoe shine shop uh it was bowman's bakery which was i believe was in some way had had been affiliated with the Penway Bakery as well and an insurance office. Unfortunately, all of these were lost in the fire, and that is the southwest corner. Here we are on the northeast corner, uh, where in 1842, or roughly in that area, Peter Forney uh, built his furniture manufacturing and uh, ware warehouses. Uh, this uh, stood here, I believe, till 1882 uh, when uh, the family furniture business didn't go out of business, but he transferred it over to a Harvey Sheffy who eventually rented uh, the quarter building to a grocery and tobacco uh, and oyster bar. And then also uh, a uh, butcher shop, Lutz's Butcher Shop, which I believe that's where the subway is today. Uh, he had, why not moving in there, Peter Forney, when he had married Maria Henning, who I believe was of the Henning family that uh, 
owned a hotel across the street, which would have been on the southwest uh, corner. <coughs> he also, they operated like a lot of furniture businesses. They operated a uh, coffin making business and an undertaker business as well. Uh, the older lady just saw the picture of her. her name was Granny Forney. She actually operated a cake uh, business and a beer shop out of one of those storefronts. Eventually, uh, after this guy had uh, bought it, I believe in 1933, those original buildings that had made up that whole conglomerate on uh, that lot were torn down and instead a mobile gas station was built uh, in its place. Now that operated for several decades until it eventually became a auto sales, I believe Shirk's auto sales, and then eventually it was remodeled into a pizza shop, which was Roma Pizza, pizza on the corner there. Anybody that ate pizza there knew it was delicious. Um, you could see in the background, the back part of that lot was the post office that I talked about. Those were eventually removed in 2010 uh, as Anvil was trying to remodel downtown to make it better for business. So those were both removed. So now it's sort of like that sitting area and I believe a parking lot. Uh, this building here, that was uh, is now a subway, but it became the home to Frank's Hot Dog Restaurant, which was apparently quite the uh, hangout for the college students. Frank and his wife were Greek immigrants and they had befriended the uh, owners of that building and they had given them an opportunity to run this business and they were definitely a staple of the community. And that is the northwest or northeast corner of the square. We now visit the southeast corner where Turkey Hill stands today. This is Seabold's drugstore and uh, this was their family home and drugstore somewhere around 1875 this property was owned by the Seabold family and this continued to run till as late as I believe the 1940s and they just eventually ran into hard times and the uh, store was shut down uh, and it also I believe it was sometime shortly thereafter uh, to meet the needs of the service station that was to the east of the building. So apparently there there's also a station which we'll talk about here shortly. And this gives you a good view from the mobile station, which would have been on the northeast. So you can look down like south down uh, Route 934 or White Oak Street. But they had uh, run that drugstore for a long time. They said the apothecary had some really colorful jars and pretty neat. And, and you see here on the right-hand side of that picture – is H.W. Uh, Miller's hardware store. It eventually became Fortna's uh, auction house, but that was uh, run for a very, very long time. It used to be a local hangout for kids, and uh, they eventually, once that shut down, it became uh, Miller's uh, grocery for a while until it became Fortna's. As of late, it's basically been, I think, a number of different restaurants. Uh, one thing of note I would say is pretty cool. Actually, behind where Turkey Hill stands today, uh, back when the town was started, they had they talked about, oh, they had like three schools, four churches, but they had this the Stone Academy. And the Stone Academy apparently stood right behind where Turkey Hill is now. Obviously not there anymore, but that's one cool thing of note. And then you'll have as well uh, another thing of note, like down the street a little further down east would be where the movie theater is. And that was originally the Hippodrome. I don't have any pictures up of that, sorry. But uh, uh, eventually became the Astor Theater, I believe, in the 20s. And then continued to show movies until it went out of business, I believe, in like the 70s, it was a religious movie showing house for a while, and then apparently it started showing naughty films. <laughs> Eventually, thank goodness, Skip and uh, Mary Jane Hicks bought it and revitalized it and then turned it into the Allen Theater, named after Skip uh, Hicks' father. And the coffee house next door was named MJ's Coffee House after his mother, Mary Jane. This building is actually south of Turkey Hill and south of where the Seabold Drug Store would have been. 
and this was actually a carriage works that was run by John Saylor. That building still stands today, and as you see, there's three bays there. It's now an apartment house, and then eventually, as carriages went out and it became the automobile, they started being an automobile works that I think it was even like a little bit of like a gas station service station there. So I'm not sure if that's the service station they're referring to, <coughs> but <it coughs> eventually they closed it up and they made it into the apartment buildings that it is today. And that is Anvil's town square, all four corners. Thanks everybody. So as we close this first of our About Town series having to do with Anvil, Pennsylvania and its town square, the center of that town, we're reminded that these buildings really in the end don't define us. And these towns are as much as the tangible proof of the existence of our forebears are these buildings, these creations of mankind. What truly makes a town a town, a community a community is the people that have come before us. Whether it's through the businesses and the lives that they led, uh, the impact that they've left, the legacy that they have given us. This heritage, it's really unending. It's something that's worth holding on to. And, and, and part of the reason to do a series like this, to remember these buildings, is not only to remember the architecture, the businesses that helped mold these communities, but it's the people. It's the people that were housed in them. The homes, the businesses, these places, the front door was like a threshold. It was a threshold into life. It saw the ending of life. It saw the beginning of life. It saw young men go off the war. It saw them never come back. It saw heroes come back and were welcomed graciously back into their home. It saw our triumphs. It saw our failures. It saw our joys and our sorrows. If these homes and these businesses could talk, oh, the stories that they could tell, and it would be grand to listen to them. It's so easy to forget what happened in yesteryear or to reminisce of a better time when these communities that held people closer together and they worked together, they weren't without their problems, no doubt. But our past can also not only be to remind us of what was, but of what can be. And that's the importance of doing this series. And I'm thankful for the opportunity and to hear these stories to read these uh, stories as I research. And it makes me think that there are great possibilities ahead of us, despite all the things that we see that make us think, wow, this world keeps on getting worse and worse. Humanity has its moments. And a lot of these, these pictures are glimpses into when it had its moments, that there was a beauty to humanity and a love that's possible. And with looking back at these people, at these communities, I'm reminded of one of these homes. They laid the founding stone, and it was done in German. But what it said was, in hope we lay the stone, on hope let us build. So as we go into our future, and as we look at these, these old houses and these buildings, many of which aren't with us anymore, as we've seen with this uh, series, the beginning of this series, on the uh, town square in Anvil. Many still remain, but these stories, these people, their legacy, it truly remains. And I feel that it's an opportunity for us to sort of go back to that time when we were innocent and young and allow these memories to wash over us like a warm summer rain and to sit back and just listen and see these sights, these sounds that are an endless symphony of the human endeavor. That's what history is. History is a lesson. History is a reminder of what can be, of what we should value, because our hometowns are, in a lot of ways, it's a great memory. It's a place that, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, we want to escape. But in a lot of ways, we can't, because we'll never get away from the people and the events, and the places that made us, and that's our hometown. This is Anvil, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is just the first of a series that I'll be doing in this town, and uh, 
really would have loved to have gone back and, and listened. Like some of these communities, they talk about the one community, an Italian community, that they were uh, the a lot of them came over and were the stone workers for the quarry and. You would hear on Saturday nights the music, people would come out, the musicians, and play music. And it was just extraordinary. It had to be extraordinary to be part of that. Just to, to listen to that and to go back and experience that would be awesome. So with this, I want to say thank you for coming along on another adventure. And I want to say we will see you again on our next adventure, and we will see you about town. Thanks, everybody.